Well, uh, following some conversation with David uh, yesterday, I decided to change a little bit my presentation. So now let's see what happens. <laughs> um, so essentially, I would just mention some of the telomerase activity, but I will focus a little bit on what our laboratory has actually been doing in the, in the last, let's say, 15 years. So we have mainly focused on virus-related cancers, and obviously there are the EBV uh, cancers associated and the papilloma virus, and we have been also focusing on hepatitis C virus related hepatocellular carcinoma. And we, we are very much interested in, in uh, looking at the stage when from uh, a chronic infection we are moving to cancers. And in order to verify some of the mechanisms, we have been usually using uh, a couple of different type of cancers associated with, uh, with the same eventually uh, pathogen. In this case, for instance, we are looking at uh, um, uh, cervical cancers and oropharyngeal, and these are very interesting because we have uh, uh, the cervical cancer with 100% attributable to papilloma virus, and in this case, the 16, the HPV 16 and the HPV 18 have been involved in 70% of the cervical cancer. Instead, in the oropharynx, we have just 12% which are attributable to papilloma virus, but most of them are actually HPV 16 related. And when we talk about the, uh, the oropharyngeal cancers, it's just 10% of all head and neck cancers, which are not necessarily related to the papilloma virus. Most of the studies, besides the HPV detection and so on, have been focused on um, focus micro, microarray, so at low density with the R2 profiler. And uh, in, in a different type of studies, we have been using uh, as I mentioned, the hepatocellular carcinoma HCV associated. And in this case, uh, we have been using a, a conventional high density uh, microarray. And uh, the goal, the end point was in this case to identify um, genes which were uh, eventually at high density, so highly expressed in uh, chronic uh, um, HCV infection, uh, but very little in, in hepatocellular carcinoma or vice versa. For instance, we see uh, a set of genes which are mainly expressed in hepatocellular carcinoma, HCV related compared to the chronic infection and the control population. Um, and this is just a time course analysis in order to pinpoint better the type of genes. So coming back to uh, telomerase, um, so, as you know very well what is the telomerase activity, so it's just increasing the length of uh, uh, the terminal part of the chromosomes, so the telomeres, and, um, and the activity is associated to the senescent and eventually to, to overcome the crisis to get uh, to the immortality and, and eventually to cancers. Um, and, uh, ah. So there is a, ah, okay, and this is based uh, obviously on the um, uh, uh, reverse transcriptase activity and the complex with, uh, with the, uh, an RNA uh, repetitive of uh, mainly adeno and cytosine uh, sequences. Uh, mm, there is a problem. Okay, anyway. Um, so in, uh, already in the chronic stages, so when there is just a, a, a papilloma virus infection or HCV infection, we have an impact on the telomerase. So the telomerase activity starts to grow, to, uh, to, to be higher. And this is very likely because the, uh, usually an infection should uh, uh, stimulate um, an apoptotic mechanism, so infected cells should die. Uh, instead, most of these uh, viruses, 
in order to become to be chronically infected, they are carrying specific genes which interferes with the normal apoptotic pathway on P53, and in this case we are looking at the, on the telomerase activity interference. And we see that papillomavirus with E6 and the, the E6 uh, uh, associated protein complex are actually able to activate the telomerase activity and the same with the ACV, but HCV with the different protein, in this case the core protein. And this is just to an example of what different type of viruses, for instance, HTLV1, uh, as well as HPV, EBV, and so on, they are able to impact with the TERT in a positive way. Some of them are in a negative way, but at the end, the overall uh, um, the type of interaction is that usually all of them uh, increase the telomerase activity, although just the EBV is associated with the increased length of the telomeres, so not all of them will increase eventually the, the telomerase. Now, going back to specifically to the E6 protein and the E6, uh, E6 uh, anti, um, associated protein effects, we will see different activity in increasing uh, uh, the effects on TERT, in some cases at the level of mRNA, in some cases the association with the DNA, and also in these two are actually two different mechanisms, because one is associated to the canonic telomerase activity at the nuclear level, and in the other case is associated to non-canonical activity uh, um, in the mitochondrial uh, cells. Um, so, when we move to cancer, uh, moving from uh, uh, the CIN and so on, the different levels of the, the of cervical uh, displays, dysplastic lesions to the cervical cancer, what happened is that we saw, again, some major difference looking at, at the different uh, cancer related to papillomavirus. Even within the cervical cancer, so if uh, we look at the uh, squamous cell carcinoma or the adenocarcinoma, and uh, um, what was very interesting is that uh, in the infection stage, usually the level of uh, um, HPV E6 protein uh, is uh, associated with TERT, but this is not the same in, in cancer. So for instance, uh, in SIA, which the E6 expression is uh, almost uh, zero, we have a very high level of uh, TERT expression, and vice versa, in ILA, where we have a high level of E6 expression, we have a very little TERT. So then we, look, we start to look for uh, mutations, and, uh, and this is the results at the level of uh, uh, promoter of the TERT promoter, and so we see the uh, hot spot mutations, mainly at minus 124, minus 146 in the, in, in the promoter. So this implies that if we look at the level of uh, TERT, if we are focusing on, on TERT genes expression, then the cause of the TERT expression could be different in the different stages, and in particular in the, in the infectious stages, will be just a functional increase, while in, the, in cancer will be mutated one. Um, and in, so at the end, what we see is something very similar to what has been reported for the melanoma, cancer where TERT mutation at the promoter level is very high. So it's the similar results. Uh, although with differences, depending if we are looking at the squamous cell carcinoma versus uh, adenosquamous carcinoma, or even to the type of HPV-16, which are present. So where the HPV-16 is very much uh, active, um, so you don't need so much mutation, because this, in this case, is functional inhibition. Instead, for the other than HPV-16, where the E6 is very weaker, then you do need to have a, a type of mutation to increase the activity of the telomerase. Um, 
And then there is also even something else. So if we look at the expression of the um, HPV16 genes in different uh, lesions, um, there is a, 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 another problem. Um, usually the E6, E7 is uh, just one single uh, uh, RNA uh, message and then you need the splicing in order to have the two, both of them. And there is a, an, an even problem for E6, so where we have two different isomers, isomers 1 and isomers 2. And the isomers 2 is actually uh, less active because there is a bigger spliced region in this, in this area. Um, so when you look at different HPV-related cancers, so depending if it is oropharyngeal or, or cervical cancer, then you will see different levels of expression, not only of the different oncogenic um, uh, early proteins of papillomavirus, but also different levels of isoforms. And obviously the, the isoforms too is less active. So what is amazing at the end is that the um, moving from uh, an early um, stage where the papillomavirus is relevant and the E6 is full length, then moving from a chronic infection to a cancer, what happens is that you will start to see an increase of uh, the E6-2 and the higher expression level of E7. And, um, and this is clear looking at the expression of the two different isomers independently, D6-2 and D6-1 data. Um, so now going back to what uh, actually uh, David is mentioning, so all this uh, uh, data from the Cancer Genome Atlas, it is very clear that we can identify um, uh, some uh, cervical cancer, these are cervical cancer data, uh, the papillomavirus associated have uh, very little, if anything, of the T53 mutations. Instead, when we look at the papillomavirus negative samples, then all of them, most of them, have the presence of the mutation. So the effect can be the same, meaning that you have an inhibition of T53, uh, but it depends if you have a, a strong HPV, particularly HPV16, you don't need to have mutations at the T53 level because it's already uh, functionally inactivated by D6. Instead, in, in, uh, in, the, in the samples without HPV, then you need, obviously, some, some mutation. Um, and when we talk about mutations, um, we have to focus on the type even of mutations because the crucial one are the one associated with the DNA binding domain, in particular the 249, which is the mutation associated with the uh, aflatoxin. Now, in the tonsillar carcinoma, where we have just 10% that are associated with the with uh, HPV, then you can see that uh, there are very often mutations, but also in the mutations when is HPV16 positive, most of the mutations are actually silent. So we, don't, we need to see where they are located and if they are silent or not. Just saying mutation does not mean anything. And uh, as we can see, if in the T53 mutation in tonsillar carcinoma, Usually, the mutations are not modifying the activity of WAF1, uh, which is downstream of the P53. And instead, for the oral carcinoma, when uh, are HPV negative, so the mutation must be relevant and the, in, the, in the range as for all other different cancers where you need to inactivate the activity of WAF1. And we can even uh, analyze the type of mutations based on the, on the type of uh, transversion or transitions if they are associated to the papillomavirus or classical uh, cigarette smoking or alcohol for the tonsils. Even going within the cervical cancer, if we uh, identify uh, between squamous cell carcinoma and the adenocarcinoma, we will see something very peculiar. So, the, generally, 
um, has been reported that for cervical cancer, the T53 um, um, prevalence is, mutations is very low, is just 6%. But if we stratify, then we can observe that the 6% is in the squam cell carcinoma. But if we look at the adenocarcinoma, then we have a 50% um, prevalence. So this is showing that essentially mutations or the functional or the type of papillomavirus which is there will be completely different. Um, okay, this is just uh, some data. And again, this is just to refer to the story of uh, looking at the presence of the papillomavirus. You can immediately understand if the T53 uh, is needed as a mutation or not, because you have a functional inactivation. Um, so in conclusion, for instance, we have to look for the different prevalence of papillomavirus, the different genotypes between cervical and squamous cell carcinoma within the cervix or oropharyngeal versus the cervical cancers because we have different genotype prevalence, different levels of expression, which is high in cervical squamous cell carcinoma, but is low in oropharyngeal cell carcinoma, different level of T53, uh, different degree of TERT promoter mutations, which is low in oropharyngeal squamous carcinoma, but high in cervical cancer. And then there is the uh, expression of telomerase. Why do we need to do this type of study? Well, because it, it is very clear as a survival, overall survival in oropharyngeal cancer. When there is uh, uh, HPV positive samples, with or without non-critical mutations, then the survival is very high. If they are HPV negative, in order to progress, they need much more mutations. So in that case, uh, the, uh, the type of uh, um, prognosis is very low. And in this case, the type of treatment must be much more aggressive. Uh, this implies that you don't need just surgery, but you need surgery, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy, and so on. And in any case, the prognosis will be much lower. And um, in order to analyze a little better the, the, the interference between uh, the epithelial cells and the stromal component, we are developing these organotypic cultures to analyze specifically what is the effects of CAF, of the, uh, the fibroblast associated, uh, cancer associated fibroblast, the one that uh, Eugenio was uh, mentioning, just because the in what we have observed is that usually we focus on the epithelial part of the lesions, but if we move the calf cells from the lesions to a normal uh, epithelial, then you will see something very unbelievable. So that the calf cells, which usually we do not characterize, because they are not necessarily genetically modified, they are able to mainly influence also the uh, epithelial uh, part above. Uh, and this is just uh, some of the, of the data, but okay. This is the group. And uh, I want just to mention to you that we have an infectious agents and cancer. I am uh, the, the editor in chief, actually. I founded the journal uh, more than 10 years ago, and I invite you to uh, submit your publication to these journals. Thank you. Any questions from the floor? Thank you for the interesting lecture. I could understand uh, HPV uh, is able uh, to cause the carcinogenesis by its own proteins, E6 and E7. Does it mean that the vaccination against the HPV uh, can lead to eradication of, uh, to treatment of the can cancer patient if we use it as a uh, therapeutic vaccine. Because as far as I can understand, it can help because there are no mutations uh, in the cancer cells which can 
maintain the cancer growth if the uh, virus is eliminated? Uh, well, I, I did not follow very well, but um, I suppose that you are mentioning between the vaccine effects as preventive and as therapeutic. Is that correct? Uh, if, uh, if we have a patient uh, which has a tumor caused by HPV infection, can we treat this patient by uh, therapeutic vaccination against HPV? Well, it will be useless. How do you suggest? Okay. Um, so it, the, the vaccine has been developed as a preventive vaccine um, and in fact is not focused on the oncoproteins, so it does not contain E6, E7 and so on, but it's only the external capsid uh, uh, virus-like particles. Um, um, in some strategies, uh, has been proposed to be, and in fact also in our institute we are using as a therapeutic application, uh, in patients who are uh, HPV positive, you remove the tissue, you check that there is not further papillomavirus uh, uh, lesion there, and then is given the, the conventional preventive vaccine. Um, in order to reduce the recurrence of the infection, not is not therapeutic for the lesion, is a preventive of further chronic reactivation. So this this is the concept. But we cannot talk about the therapeutic vaccine. Is used therapeutically, meaning that is after the surgery treatment and so on, you verify the papillomavirus at that moment is not there and you can vaccinate the subject. The, the idea, the aim, the goal is to reduce the probability of recurrency. Thank you. It's clear. <laughs>